Right in the middle of the Colorado Plateau, the area is mostly sandstone that's eroded over millions of years, resulting in this unique terrain that we have here, which seems like it was created for mountain biking. You're starting at over 11,000 feet. The trail passes through multiple different climates while you're riding. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenny. I've been a mountain bike guide here since 2017, and I've worked in the mountain biking industry since 2015. I'm the owner of Bighorn Mountain Biking, which is an outfitter with bike rentals and a guiding service. And I've been here in Moab since 2017. And before that, I was in the environmental research field in the Florida Gulf Coast, the west coast of Florida. So just have some significant amount of outdoor experience. The purpose of the webinar today is to highlight the important things that you need to know when, when planning a trip out here to Moab. There's a ton of information to sort through, and it's easy to get off track while you're researching your, your options online. And uh, hopefully today we'll be able to sort out some of those, those details for you. So what we're going to be covering, we're going to talk about the diversity of Moab mountain biking trails, the different terrain. We're going to cover some of the famous and classic trails that you've probably heard of. And then we're going to cover a few of the ones that you might not have heard of, like the Moab brand trails. After that, we're going to look at getting around and some of the logistical challenges that we have here. And then finally, we'll finish up with a Q&A session. So... I can answer any of the questions that you have that, that I didn't cover. The diversity of Moab mountain biking trails here. Moab's a small town out in eastern Utah, located on the western slope of the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide is, is right there through the Col state of Colorado, which is the Rocky Mountains. Right in the middle of the Colorado Plateau, the area is mostly sandstone that's eroded over millions of years by wind and water and resulting in this unique terrain that we have here, which is, seems like it was created for mountain biking. There are uh, two major rivers that flow through the area and join just south of Moab. The Green River and the Colorado have a huge part in the development of the surrounding area. And this photo is taken from Slick Rock, looking over the Colorado River. Another amazing aspect of the area is the LaSalle Mountain Range. You can see it in the background here. And this is a granite formation that's part of the Rocky Mountains that's pushed up through the younger sandstone layer due to tectonic pressure. It's important to understand all the geology that we have out here because you'll have, you have a wide range of terrain that you'll be riding when you visit Moab. These geologic aspects of the region make it a, a sporting mecca. There's high level mountain biking, climbing, canyoneering, rafting, off-roading. Uh, Moab has some of the highest levels of difficulty and features for, for many of these sports. So Moab has a ton of mountain biking trails. It would take weeks to ride each system and that quantity of riding uh, makes it hard to pinpoint and plan and execute a trip that's an overall success. I'm gonna highlight some of the best options to make it much easier for you. So you're not spending hours trying to plan your trip online. The popular trail system that we're gonna talk about um, on the advanced or expert side is Slick Rock, the whole enchilada and Amasabak with Ahab. And then the beginner to intermediate systems that we're going to focus on are the Moab Brand Trails, or BAR-M, and Dead Horse Point State Park, or Intrepid. So this right here is a good example. Some of these trail systems have multiple names, which doesn't make it easy whenever you're doing research online. So we'll help you clear that up today. Throughout the, the chat today, I'm going to use terms like advanced, expert, intermediate. I find those qualifiers to be the most widely understood verbal descriptions of the trails. However, I want to connect those with the trail ratings that are commonly used in the mountain biking world. You can see the white circle and the green circle are going to be the easiest and the easy. Those correspond to the beginner stuff. And then I like to see that the intermediate kind of overlaps with some of the easy and the, the more difficult trails out here. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of feedback we get from visitors is that, you know, our easy trails seemed like their intermediate trails. Of course, that's not true for everybody, but that's just common feedback that we get. So the more difficult blue square is gonna be intermediate. And then advanced is gonna be that black diamond rating. And then the expert is gonna be that double black diamond. The first trail I'm gonna talk about is Slick Rock. Slick Rock is arguably one of the most famous trails that we have, or that's in the world. Most people have probably heard of it. It was established over 50 years ago for moto use. And the terrain that you're riding on is nearly 100% sandstone. So, the trail is defined by lines. You can see that little white line at the bottom there that's painted on the rock. The whole ride, you're riding up and over giant petrified sand dunes, which is a unique experience, obviously. 
And that's why it's such a draw for people. It's world famous and it's extremely unique. The thing about Slick Rock though, people want to ride it because it's famous and, and it's unique riding, but it's a very challenging trail. It's advanced due to its in endurance level requirements. It's somewhat hard to describe. People ask if it's technical. So it's not it's not technically technical because it doesn't have super bumpy mixed rock terrain. It's all rock. So it's kind of smooth, but it has very steep, what we describe as punchy climbs and descents. You're constantly going up and going back down. There's no sustained up and down that's happening. It's advanced due to its endurance level requirements. And I like to describe it as a uh, type two fun where, you know, when you're riding it, it's kind of like a suffer fest. It's really hard. You're out of breath. You're constantly working. So, you know, those of you who are wondering what type two fun is, that's basically like you're suffering the whole ride. And then when you finally get back to your car, you're trying to convince your friends that it was great. And then you, <laughs> you remember it fondly, but during the time it was tough. So it being famous and people hearing about it, it's a bucket list trail. This is going to be one of the many opinions on this presentation. I think it's far less enjoyable for most people than a lot of the trails that have been recently developed. It's just not for everyone. But if you look here, it's close to town. Moab is just off the map here. And it's a lollipop. So the main trail system here comes out to a loop and then back to the main trailhead. It's 10 miles total, or roughly 10 miles. It is a different type of 10 miles. I, I would say it feels like closer to 20 when it comes to the amount of effort that you're using. The reason I say that is because when folks come and or give me a call or come into the bike shop and ask me what trail to go ride and they suggest that they want to ride Slick Rock, I tell them, you know, how hard it is and explain to them, you know, that the 10 miles is a little bit longer than 10 miles that they might do after work or on the weekends. But what's nice about Slick Rock is you can come out to it and uh, give it a go here on the practice loop. What that does is that just gives you like a little shorter loop, less commitment to know what that 10 miles is going to feel like. Moving on, we're going to talk about Captain Ahab, which is at the Amasa Back Trail System. It is an advanced trail and it's relatively short. It's only around eight miles when you loop it. And there's, there's two different loop options. You can loop the entire thing, which combines upper Ahab and lower Ahab, or you can just loop the lower Ahab section. It's close to town. You can ride it from town. It's one of the few trails that's easy to ride from Moab, the valley. It's a great way to test your skills before you ride a bigger, longer, more remote trail like the Enchilada, which we'll talk about next. You know, the reason that that's important, it's closer to town, it's shorter, so if you bite off a little bit more than you can chew, it's a little easier to walk out of. Here's the map. I have this little uh, red dot to signify where Moab is on the map. And this road here is what you connect to. Next to the river, you connect to the trail system, which is out here. So you can see here, the trailhead right here has this nice little new connector that the, the trail group created here, which is awesome. So you can not have to ride on the road. And then you climb up this purple trail called High Masa to loop Upper Ahab right here, and then continue on to Lower Ahab. It is pretty common to, you know, if you're short on time to come out here, climb High Masa, and then just do this lower Ahab loop. Very popular little loop to do to get in some gnarly riding close to town. This brings me to the whole enchilada. This trail is the reason why I wanted to start with the geologic information that I shared earlier. The trail, when it's completely open, starts all the way in the at the top of the LaSalle's here in one of these passes and continues on down this rim all the way down to the river. You're starting at over 11,000 feet, and it's roughly 4,000 feet of elevation at the bottom. The trail passes through multiple biomes, basically. You're going through multiple different climates while you're riding the trail. So this is how it looks at the top. It's like an alpine-type environment. And then this is how it looks at the bottom, like a canyon. The specs of the trail here, it's got different sections. The lowest is Porcupine Rim, which makes up about, I would say, a third, maybe a little bit more than a third of the entire trail. Above that, you have LPS, UPS, Cocapelli, Hazard, and Burrow Pass. So collectively, that is known as the whole enchilada. Most of the time, it's ridden as a shuttle run, and the shuttle goes to the trail that's most appropriately ridden depending on the season. So think about the way elevation works with weather here. There's going to be snow on Porcupine Rim in the early spring, all the way up into, at the Burrow Pass, obviously. And that snow is going to melt out off as the season continues, as you get later in the spring and into the summer. 
So the way it's written basically is you just have to figure out where the shuttles are running that time of year. Currently right now, I think we're at Cocopelli and it's obviously different every single year depending on the weather. But just know that the whole enchilada is going to be what you can ride depending on the time of year that you're here. It's really good to get that information from the bike shops. You want to know where the shuttles are running. It doesn't do anybody any good for you to decide that you want to go higher than where the shuttles are running because it's not just about the experience that you're going to have on the trail. It's about the fact that you're going to be riding in snow and ice and you're probably going to damage our trails. That's why we suggest that you go where the shuttles are dropping off. The shuttle starts running all the way to the top in July. That's the earliest it's going to run to the top at Borough Pass. That's generally as long as it takes for the snow to melt all the way off the, the, the mountain there. You have to be aware that July is one of the hottest, hottest months that we have here in Moab. So it's interesting. You're going to start up at Borough Pass, maybe with a light jacket on, and you're going to descend down toward the elevation of Moab, which is 4,000 feet, and it's going to be close to 100 degrees. So you have to kind of plan for that. It's, a, it's an interesting experience. From Borough Pass all the way down to the river is about 27 miles. And then you have another six miles to get back into town after that. So the elevation profile, it's, it's roughly 1,300 feet of climbing throughout the trail. I want to mention that first because a lot of people think it's all downhill. That's a very common thing that we hear. It's like, oh, it's all downhill, right? There's a lot of work to be done, even though this is a shuttle run. So there's about 1,300 feet of climbing, and, and 600 of that actually starts right off the start here. Um, and you're above 10,000 feet. It's really hard to breathe at that elevation, especially if you're not used to it. So you start with a ton of climbing before you even drop in. But the highlight, what a lot of people like to hear, there is roughly 7,800 feet of, of descent throughout the trail. And the trail's mostly mostly advanced. It does mellow out in the, in the middle for a little bit, but it's mostly advanced riding, some expert sections. So just think about it, 27 miles advanced expert. If you're ready for it, it's great. If you're not, it's not great. We're going to look at an example of a rider um, on the LPS section. It's just a good example of, of this expert level of terrain that you're going to encounter. There you go. Up. That's good. Bring it you down. It. Bring Perfect. It down. Start looking right. Start looking right. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Woo! That was good, though. You made the hard part. That expert level is pretty high level mountain biking there. And, and you, most of us know that the way the terrain looks on a video is usually not even nearly as, as gnarly as it looks in person. So the whole trail isn't that level, but you do come across different obstacles like that quite a few times on the enchilada. Now that we've, uh, we've talked about some of those world-famous hardcore and advanced trails that most, most mountain bikers heard, have heard about, those trails are, are amazing, but only appropriate for advanced and expert level riding. Now that we've talked about those, I'd want to introduce you to some, some other options that we have here in town. We're going to start with the Moab Brand Trails. The Moab Brand Trails is a web of trails. So you have beginner, intermediate, and advanced trails all in the same trail system. The terrain, there's a variety of terrain. You have, you have slick rock, you have clay, and you have gravel, and you have views of arches. So who rides at the Brands? Everybody rides at the Brands. Local riders, expert riders, beginner riders. The trail system has something for everybody. It's 10 miles from town, so it's reasonably convenient to go out and ride. So you can just go do a half day ride if you want to. This photo here is one of the less technical sections of the trail, but very enjoyable. This image is a good example of the variety of, of terrain that makes up most of the brands. You see this rider here is riding on some clay and gravel and then transitions over to this little slick rock patches here. Riders having a good time. I know because the rider is me. Here's a map of the brands that I'm going to go over with you. And this is going to be another portion of, uh, of some opinions from a local. Not everybody's going to have the same opinions on how to go about riding this, but this is mine. So the trailhead is going to be right here in the center. That's where most people are going to start. Beginner and intermediate riders, even advanced riders, are going to most likely start here on easy. Easy is a directional trail. So you do have to ride it from the trailhead to, what is that, the southeast. Really fun, beginner to intermediate little section of trail. Good place to get warmed up and going. After you ride that, I always suggest to come across the bike path here. You want to watch out. This, this black line here comes all the way into town. But when you cross the bike path, you always got to watch out for, for road bikers speeding by. And then come out here and ride Rusty Spur. And Rusty Spur is going to be the beginner, beginner single track. 
it's really good. You get warmed up on easy. You might be hitting a few obstacles and then you come mellow out a little bit here on rusty spur. And then from there you come up and ride lazy and lazy is also going to be directional. So you ride it from the Southeast up to the Northwest here to get back to this starting intersection. And that's where you're going to make a judgment call, whether or not you uh, want to step it up a little bit. If you don't, there's tons of miles of double track, like Jeep road that has slick rock and, and gravel and clay terrain and obstacles. That's really fun. It's going to be, it's bar end loop. And it comes out here around, gets you a lot of miles. It's nice. You'll be able to get a good exercise in and not have to step it up if you don't want to. If you do, you can come ride North 40, which is a good solid intermediate trail. A lot of fun. Good amount of obstacles on it. It's going to be similar to easy and lazy, but there's just going to be more frequent obstacles. It's going to be a little tougher to get up the climbs. So if you did have a good time on easy and lazy, but you're kind of on the fence, don't be afraid to go try it. All you have to do is, is hop off and walk some of the obstacles that you might not want to ride. You're only walking 10 feet or so. You're not having to hike a long way with your bike. So that's another good trail. I like to do this one counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. Yeah, it's a good it's a good place to really set that bar when it comes to intermediate riding. From there, if you still have some gas in the tank, you want to come ride Circle O here, which is a 100% slick rock trail. So that it's a good example of what you can go experience without having to commit yourself to riding the advanced version of the slick rock terrain. So Circle O, I like to ride it this way, but this is very important to know. Circle O, this is the bottom right here. So this is a situation I describe as basically riding on credit where you're going to descend for a while and then have to climb back out of it. You have to judge how much gas you have in the tank before you get all the way to the bottom because 10 minutes of fun can turn into 30 minutes of climbing. So just know that. And then this stuff over here, you can see the topography lines being really close together. These are going to be the more advanced trails real steep. And this is going to be type two fun as well. I would say it's, it's not going to be a lot of high speed stuff, a lot of work, a lot of up and down, but you'll have a good variety of terrain and, and a real challenge down here. I ride these in the spring a lot of times to remind me of uh, how bad a shape I've gotten into in the winter. So next we're going to talk about dead horse. Dead horse is another similar level trail system. It's at a state park and it sits around 5,900 feet above sea level. So a little bit higher than Moab. It's around 2,000 feet above the Colorado River, which is right here in this canyon. Formation isn't exactly a mesa, but it, cause it's not isolated, but it's more like a peninsula that comes out. It's surrounded by this river basin here. Here's an example of a good ride that one of our guests had. This is Jessica. She is out here enjoying the unique and exciting feeling of riding little slick rock terrain at Dead Horse. It was perfect for her experience level because she She'd ridden a bike before, but she's never ridden off-road. So we set her up on the bike. We, we explained the components to her and the controls and gave her some helpful trail tips. And then took her out riding and we were able to show her different techniques. And through the day, she made a ton of progress and had a ton of fun. So here's the map of Dead Horse. You can see the, the highway intersects the trail system here. And then you can see with these topography lines, how this geologic formation is. And the trail system's kind of in the body of the peninsula here. And the point is going to be off the map a little bit. So we actually just opened a location, Bighorn Mountain Biking did, right here at this yurt area, which is now the mountain bike trailhead. So we're right there in the middle of the trail system. The riding method that I, that I described to people is this. We usually have them start up Raven Roll because it's a good beginner trail to get you warmed up. Regardless of your riding level, of course, it's good to get your blood pumping. And then start on Big Chief here. I like to ride this clockwise as well. You can see there's tons of good overlooks that you get to experience. And although it looks this way, you're never that close to the edge. You know, you have overlooks that are formal that you walk out to. You're not riding next to the edge. But this is going to have some intermediate, it's mostly beginner, but it's going to have some intermediate obstacles that you're going to encounter. But it's going to be the same thing. It's just the nature of Moab. You're going from rock layer to rock layer. So when you come up to those harder obstacles, if you don't want to ride them, you just step off the bike, you walk 10 feet and you get back on the bike. It's not going to be, you're not going to be hiking. And then from there, you can connect back over to us. If you're wrapping it up, that would usually end up being an hour for most folks. Or you can continue on down Great Pyramid here to enjoy the really massive, impressive overlooks. This little connector trail down to the visitor center is called Intrepid. And you're going to come down here and maybe fill up your water at the visitor center, soak up some AC if it's the hot part of the year. And there's some more information and little hikes that you can do. Park your bike and check out the visitor center. It's definitely worth it. So from there, we usually have people come back up Raven Roll to us to give us some feedback. If they still have gas in the tank, if they still want to keep riding, we can tell them exactly what to do at that point, judging by how they felt about this loop here. Prickly Pear is a directional trail. 
or at least suggested directional trail. And you do that clockwise as well. That's going to be a little bit, you can see here the uh, rankings, it's going to be a little bit harder, a little bit, a little bit more advanced. Beyond that is Whiptail and Twisted Tree, definitely the, the more advanced sections of trail. You actually get some overlooks of the Big Bend in the Colorado River, which is pretty popular. But again, this is some more of the advanced stuff. So you want to feel comfortable on the rest of this before you come out here and ride Whiptail and Twisted Tree. But that is the one little loop area that I do counterclockwise and then connect back over on crossroads there. All right. So how do we get all, how do we get our bikes around and how do we get to these trails? Here is an overview map of the whole area. Moab is down here in uh, the bottom right corner of the map because the majority of the trails are north of town. Your options when you come to town are, you know, renting bikes in town. Most likely you'll have a rental car, so you can rent a bike rack at additional charge and learn how to load them up or, and, and bring them up here to the, to the trail systems. So, well, first I'll go over right here is Slick Rock. So that's, it's really close to town. And that's why there's a huge push to ride it for a lot of people. It's just close to town. It's easy to get to, but it's still a couple hundred feet above town. It is still a challenge to pedal up to it. And then of course it's advanced. So it's only for some folks. The Brands is 10 miles north of town, the, the Moab Brand Trails. And then Dead Horse Point is right here. You can see it's not that far as a crow flies, but... 2,000 feet in elevation difference and, and a couple river crossings would get you there. So the only way to get to it is to come north of the Brands and then come down 313 out to the park that way. So your options are to rent, you know, when you're renting from town, you can get a bike rack that can accommodate two to three bikes, depending on the bike shop that you're getting it from. The other, you know, for a rental car, the other things that you can do is, is get a tailgate pad or with a rental pickup or, or a vehicle that has a hitch. It becomes a challenge. You're trying to figure out how to get to these things. You can get a shuttle also. There's shuttles that will run you up to the brands and drop you off. You can have fun riding, and then you have the 10-mile ride back to town, which is pretty fun. It's downhill on a bike path. The bike path is awesome. But, you know, some people just don't want to add that extra time to their mountain bike experience. Here are some creative examples that, <laughs> that I added of uh, people trying to solve that logistical problem. It's just not easy to transport bikes. Simple as that. If you don't have the higher level equipment, if you have a full suspension bike in one of these hanging racks, it's just not ideal. It's hard to figure this out when you're, when you're visiting a town. On the right, you see that's just sometimes how you have to figure out. I wouldn't load a bike that way, but that is how people figure out how to get some full suspensions onto their bike racks. And then this photo on the left, I guess it was probably almost a rental customer because it looks like they almost lost their bike on the highway, but they had a little bit of luck on their side and that strap on that back tire held it up. Yeah, here's a few people that uh, you would consider possibly winning the logistical challenge. You know, if you have all your gear with you, you don't have to worry about renting or anything. This guy even has a, like a live tree on his car. I'm not sure if that just grew there or if he put it there. <laughs> We tried to solve that. We started trying to come up with solutions for folks to be able to rent bikes on the trailhead. We just set up this spot up at Dead Horse Point right at the mountain bike trailhead. And uh, we're able to just get you set up on bikes after, after you just show up in your own vehicle, whether you're there for a tour or just a rental. You just show up ready to ride and we get you out on the trails. This is our brand's location, 10 miles north of town. Nothing fancy, but again, what we do, you come to us and we get you set up on bikes and we make sure you're ready to ride, give you some trail tips if it's a rental and send you out on the trails. And if it's a guided tour, we, we head out and ride with you. So what are you looking for when you come to Moab? You're looking for the best experience that you can have. Here's a quick example of one. This is some of our customers and they're an active family who was visiting town and they're looking for a convenient and, and a safe way to go out and have a fun mountain bike experience. We sent them out, rode, showed them the different terrain at the Moab Brand Trails, and they had a great time. After a couple hours, the mom and the daughter were ready to go hang out in the shade, and then the dad we took out on some more intermediate trails. This is a video of him riding Circle O, which is that Slick Rock Trail. Isn't that noise on the tires great too? Really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. It's like when you hit the bumps, it's almost like bouncing a basketball. Yeah. 
the experience is built around what you're hoping for and the trails that we bring you on are what's appropriate for your riding level. This is Carlos. Carlos is a past tour guest of ours as well. He's a more intermediate rider with experience and he just called us to figure out what trail to ride on and requested a guide. We basically gave him the same information that we're giving you today. So he made progress through the ride and, you know, many experienced riders are introduced to a new level of technical riding when they visit Moab. So after doing some online research and learning some of the options, you know, when he reached out to us and asked us a few questions and after, uh, you know, us learning his experience, we were able to suggest exactly what would be a perfect fit and what he should ride. So it was perfect. Carlos had figured out what options he had and he was unsure about his correct choice. So he called us. Here's him riding out there. Go spot him. Yeah. Go, go, go. Yes. Yes. All right. So the important takeaways today. Don't underestimate the terrain out here in Moab. It's a little different than most places. It's unique, and that's what makes people want to ride it. So just don't underestimate the riding levels. Trust expert advice. If you call the bike shops, if you call one of us in the industry here, we usually try to learn your level of riding before we answer any questions. So we're never trying to downplay your ability. We're just trying to give you the best advice and plan ahead, which everyone tuning in right now is doing. So proud of you. Plan ahead. It's good to know uh, what you're getting into. It makes it makes your experience a lot more enjoyable when you're not searching for the answers while you're on your trip out here. And Understand the logistics. It's easy to focus on what bike you're going to rent and what trail you're going to ride. You can spend a lot of time picking those two things out. So just don't forget there's some other aspects of your trip. You have to figure out how to get to the trails out here. So what's a successful mod experience? You know, you want to have a good time. Most people spend a lot of time and money coming to a place like this. So that's the goal. You want to have a good time and you want to stay safe while you're here. The desert is a somewhat dangerous place. You want to be wise to the hazards. You want to leave the desert the same way that you found it. And on that note, we have a really cool program here. Do it like a local. Kind of goes down that same road as, you know, respect the desert. Stay on the trail. That's probably one of the most, you know, widely expressed tips from us locals. You you have to stay on the trail. The desert's fragile. There's a lot of different plants that take a long time to grow and that are delicate. You don't want to trample them. You want to pack it out. You shouldn't peel a banana and throw a banana off into the woods anywhere, but you certainly shouldn't do it here. I see people doing that quite a bit. Those types of things don't rot away like you think they would. Same thing with like orange peels. You want to leave no trace. You don't want to leave that stuff out there. You want to make sure you don't leave any garbage. You want to understand trail etiquette while you're riding here. If somebody's coming up a climb and you're descending on a two-way trail, you want to stop your bike and put one foot off the trail, lean over and let them pass you. It's really hard to start back up when you're climbing. So the climber has the right of way. And most of the trail systems out here have that information at their trailhead. So take the time to read it. We really appreciate it when you do. And bring plenty of water. That's one of the main safety aspects out here. If you're used to riding with a bottle of water, one bottle of water, one liter of water, you might want to up that when you're here. You do want to up that. And that's that goes along with trusting the advice of the locals. If they tell you that you need three liters of water, it's you definitely need three liters of water. It doesn't equate to anything that you're used to if you're not from a desert environment. Support local trails by buying maps or donating. And most of the retail stores, the bike shop slash retail stores here, they have maps that you can purchase. And they're the maps that we actually used in the presentation today that are uh, from the Moab Trail Mix. So thanks to them for letting us use those maps and also support the trails by going into one of those retail store bike shops and buying a trail map to support the local trail system here. And I threw these two little links on. Moab Trail Alliance has a page that you can donate. There's like a little donate link if you want to support the trails before you come out here or maybe after you come out here. And do it like a local is that campaign that we have that kind of outlines a lot of the good information to know. Some of what I covered today. And here's a little pricing details of, of what we offer at Bighorn Mountain Biking. Starting at 70 with your own bike and going up to 140 per person, depending on what bike you choose with us. And Dead Horse Point's a good option there. And then the intermediate level tour, the Moab Brand Trails, because there's just a wider range of riding out there, similar pricing. And then the advanced full day tour at Mag 7, which includes a shuttle. Thank you. I appreciate you guys 57 hours putting it together to help us share this information and beta for partnering. And of course, all the people that joined in to learn more about it. Thanks everybody. See ya.